Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. In the last episode we went ahead and added a page to our Rick and Morty application here, the search characters page, which quite simply at the moment just has a little uh, edit text here. And uh, after they stop typing for a little bit, uh, we capture what they've typed so far. And at the moment we just print it out to the console as we can see here that jargon was printed. So in today's episode we're going to connect this functionality up to our paging 3 implementation and get something on the screen here. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, in the last episode we also created our character search view model which is just simply empty. Uh, however we are going to need to propagate the information that the user typed in to this view model so that we can start our search here. So I'm gonna say uh, submit query here uh, user search which is a string and that's about it so we're going to do something with this string here connect it up to our paging uh, implementation and then simply here inside of our search runnable instead of printing we will actually reference our view model say submit query on the current text so that's about it for the view layer at the moment but let's go ahead and continue this implementation here. So we actually do have a little bit of uh, this paging three stuff already implemented inside of our episodes view model here. And so I just wanna take a look at this because it's gonna act quite similar to this. However, we're gonna to have to change some stuff about it. So we're just gonna copy this little implementation here and we obviously have to change a, a little bit here. So one thing that I wanna talk about here is that inside of our pager, we can see that maybe if we command click in, it'll be easier. We have a paging config and initial key, which we just leave null. And then also this idea of a paging source factory, which if we take a look at the declaration of this parameter, it is of type function that produces this value here, a paging source of key to value here. So in the previous example, if we take a look at the code here, we just basically propagate an episode paging source, which is just an implementation of our paging source uh, once and that's it. But with this UI that we have here, people are going to be modifying this text field and every time we're gonna have to you know, make a new network request or update some of the information. So what we actually will have to do is invalidate the current paging source and implement a new paging source here. So we actually have that. We have made the character, I'm sorry, we'll just call this paging source and it is of type character search paging source, make this nullable. Uh, and then we're going to override the getter here. So this is basically going to run every single time we access this uh, field here. And so what we can do is we can say if our paging source is null or our paging source dot question mark is or invalid uh, equals true, that means we are basically in either an invalid state or a null state. So we are going to say, I'm sorry, this should be uh, field, not paging source. We will say field equals character search paging source, and then we will return field. All right, so it's kind of a, a simple way to create basically a singleton. So anytime we access this field here, which is our paging source, we want to ensure that we are not only non-null, and that we are, if we are invalid, we create a new one. So basically when this line of code runs, we are going to be returning a valid instance of our character search paging source here, and we can use this to our advantage in conjunction with this function here. So basically instead of uh, our little copy and paste error there, we are just going to say paging source. Now it's gonna freak out because it thinks it can be non-null, uh, but we are just going to force it to be null. So basically every time this pager asks for uh, its paging source factory to generate a paging source. We will point it to our paging source variable here, which has this getter functionality here, basically creating the singleton, in our case, not only non-null, but also making sure that it is valid. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully it is uh, you know, a little trick that we have in the aspect of Kotlin, so we can just make use of that. And then inside of here, our submit query function, we are basically going to have to submit this information here, this, this string, somehow to our pager or to our paging source, um, and then we're gonna have to call invalidate on the current one. 
So let me just think about this for a quick second. Okay, so what I've decided on here is that we're going to say current user search, which is a global variable or class level variable here, equals user search. So we are overwriting this value. And then on top of that, we are going to very simply call paging source dot invalidate here. So if we take a look here, all I've done is defined a variable here, the current user search, to be a string that is empty at first. And then basically when we create a new paging source, we are going to pass this information along. So we obviously need to up update this implementation, but that is very fine. Uh, so the flow here is when the user starts typing and they eventually stop for half a second, we call our function submit query with whatever information is inside of this text field. We update the user search, we call invalidate. The invalidate functionality will invoke the pager here to run its paging source implementation or the paging source factory to say, hey, give me a new pager uh, or, or a new paging source, excuse me. And then it will run this code here, which will create a new character search paging source with the correct current user search here. So we can go ahead and just very simply uh, add into the constructor of this class here, a private variable that just states the user search and that is going to be, of course, a string. So now at this point here, all we need to do is actually implement our paging logic. So we can make sure we can uh, reference our network layer API client. We're going to say get uh, characters page with the page number that we have here. And then uh, I believe we say if the request dot exception is non-null, then we basically return the load result dot error, uh, passing in the exception that we have here, because of course this function expects a load result. And then otherwise we can just return the load result dot page, and this page here is going to take a few things. So the data in here is going to need to be our request uh, dot body. Let's do body nullable just to be safe here. So we'll safe access that results question mark dot map and then in here we will otherwise just default to an empty list we then again have to implement the stuff here to convert the map of get character by id response to just our domain layer character so we can simply say uh, character mapper dot build from let's call this character response. And so we will just simply pass that through. We are all good there. And then otherwise our previous key is going to equal the previous key. And then our next key here is going to equal, uh, we have a little bit of a helper function that exists here. And let's just call or let's just copy that from our other implementations. And so we just simply call get page index from next. And that's going to be the request info question mark next, right? And that accepts a nullable string. So it would all work out in case our network response has failed for some reason. So that is about it, except for the fact that we are not making use of this. <laughs> uh, that is because we are using the incorrect endpoint here. So we have everything set up here. We've defined two query parameters here, the page and the name one. I'm actually going to reverse the order of these because I think they get defined in the query string or the, the URL as they appear in this parameter or inside this constructor basically, or sorry, the, the declaration of this function. And so I just like to have the page at the end. Uh, and then I guess we might as well flip these around as well. So then otherwise we will just update it to say uh, character name get characters page. I guess we can leave that. Yeah, sure. I guess we could leave it. We could just leave this as is here. Uh, and then otherwise we'll say get characters page with our user search and then uh, page number. So let's also just define or name these variables to make things a bit more obvious here. Perfect. Now we have everything up and running here. So we are going to make a network request with the specific user search for the character name. And then we handled these success and error cases, you know, pretty simply here, not too, too much 
Uh, there are a few holes in this implementation, but it's not the focus of this video here. We're just here to get something up and running and uh, we are close to that. So we can actually make use of the flow instance here that we have and we can do so by accessing it at our fragment level. So we will simply say view model dot flow. Uh, well, excuse me, we need to actually do this inside of the our lifecycle scope here. Uh, we will create a coroutine and then we can paste this in flow uh, dot collect latest, I believe is what we're interested in. Yep. So that is what we're going to uh, make use of here. So we're going to collect the latest paging data of type character. And then we will simply have our epoxy controller dot submit data of the paging data, which we can name here just to be a little bit more explicit. And then that should do it here. Um, off camera, I implemented a very simple character search epoxy controller, which basically copies exactly the, well, I think I actually have the, uh, I copy and pasted this entire block right here, but we basically have the character grid item epoxy model copied from this particular epoxy uh, controller. So it is one-to-one. -one. We can clean that up and make it one class in a little bit here. But inside of our build item model of our paging data epoxy controller, we simply return a new instance of the epoxy model for each item that we are given here. Again, we are not supporting nulls because we do not have placeholders set. And then inside of our add models function, we simply uh, have a loading state if our models are empty. And then otherwise we add all of the models to our epoxy controller here. So I think the last thing we will do is we will actually change this to set controller and build models. This will force the loading state immediately. And then otherwise, yeah, I think we're all good. I think I see a potential problem, but let's go ahead and run this. I don't know how long the episode's gotten here, but let's run it real quick and see where we stand. Okay, so things are up and running here. If we take a look at our search characters page, we have a list. Oh, interesting. This probably made a network request with an empty string, didn't it? Yeah, you see that? Name equals blank and page equals four. Yeah, 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 yeah. So inside of our view model, I guess because of the flow collect latest here, when we reference it, we get a paging source and that paging source has a current user search of nothing here. Okay, so uh, let me think about this. Okay, everybody, welcome back. I've thought about it for a little bit and Seems to be a few different solutions here to this problem, but uh, the route that I'm gonna go is you know, something simple and slightly elegant, I think, but there's, again, like I said, a bunch of different ways to do this. So inside of our character search paging source here, I've added in a new field to the constructor here, the local exception callback, which takes a local exception. Uh, we've created a sealed class in here that is a local exception, which extends our exception. And in here we have two cases that we're going to run into, right? Because the beginning case here when we go to the search characters page is the fact that it is completely empty uh, at this point, as in the user search is empty. But then it's also possible that the user just puts in a bunch of Z's and X's and random text that doesn't match anything. So we are going to run into the no results issue. So we are going to want to handle these two different uh, cases or states, if you will. And because we were using epoxy, it makes it a little bit more difficult to get to uh, the exact load result error. Uh, but there is a pretty simple way here for us to basically hook into the uh, situation that we have going on. So where we define or where we create this object here inside of this singleton instance, we just have a little callback right here that's going to run whenever we have a little issue. We can find out what the exact local exception is at this point in time, and then we can probably communicate it via other live data instances uh, to actually propagate the information to the fragment. But as we can see here, it just logs basically the local exception. So if we check out the run tab here, there's a bunch of other stuff, but we can see that we eventually get to the empty search issue down here. Uh, and that was when we first arrived at this page here, we went ahead and, uh, and presented that information. But otherwise, if we actually start typing and we start typing uh, Morty, well, hold on, we gotta get Morty spelt correctly. We actually have a little bit of uh, this working and we can see that as the user edits here, this uh, string, we are making other network requests. And if we end up going to MO where there are going to be a few other options here. Okay, maybe we had to go all the way to M. 
Uh, but once we deleted and went back to M, we can see that there are now you know other people that fit this criteria, not just the M O uh, for Morty. But then if we go ahead and type the O again, we see that a few of the other characters disappear and whatnot. So we can see that this paging is actually working properly. I did need to update our paging source uh, logic down here because we have an additional parameter inside of our uh, little page equals here. Uh, taking a look at the run tab here, we can see that now we have a name and a page. So we just need to take that into account here when we actually are parsing out the next page index. So I just had to update this logic here, but uh, just a little bit more string manipulation, so nothing too fancy there. But I'm going to cut it here because there's probably been a lot that we've covered in this episode, so I want to keep it digestible. Uh, if you notice you've made it this far in the video, please do drop a like. I really appreciate it if you are if you do subscribe. If you notice you are not already, uh, and I'll catch you in the next one where we're just going to go ahead and continue building out this search implementation, handling some of those other error cases that we brought up here, um, and then we can you know do so by presenting different information on the screen here inside of our epoxy controller. So. That'll be exciting stuff, a little bit of error handling inside of paging, and I will see you guys then. Have a good day. Thanks.